Now, something very strange happened this week. No, not Brexit. A total plum gave us a lecture on tomatoes. Now, you haven't gone bananas, but professional pipsqueak Sadiq Khan definitely has. In an astonishing rant, the Mayor of London gave a radio interview raging that our capital city was in the grip of a killer tomato famine from hell. Can't run away from those, the consequences of this extreme hard uh, Brexit. Families feel it every day. Businesses feel it every day. For goodness sake, you can't buy fresh tomatoes in London anymore or the rest of the country. What? Naturally, he blamed... Yeah, checking my notes. Oh, yeah, Brexit. Uh, what a load of rhubarb. <laughs> Firstly, you can buy tomatoes all over the shop and street markets too. If you got out of your chauffeur-driven gas guzzler motor long enough to check, Sadiq. And secondly, hasn't hot hair, sorry, clean air, Khan, got more important things to worry about, like the soaring levels of knife crime, sexual assault, burglary, sheer lack of police doing anything about any of it, uh, and, and the rest of the, the nightmare that is our capital city. Now, the great vanishing vegetable fiasco of 2023 is mostly conjured up out of the same fear factory that told you hugging your granny during COVID would kill her. Remember that? Plus, even if the country did run out of tomatoes, none of us are going to starve, are we? The shelves of every supermarket and local store are groaning with so much stuff, you need a map and a compass just to find what you want in most of them. Never have we had so much choice in everything from toilet roll to tinned goods. Seriously, try suggesting to the generation who actually experienced proper rationing during and after the war that there's a national food shortage and they'll think you're a sandwich short of a picnic. Now, Lidl is the latest retailer to limit how many cucumbers and tomatoes you can buy, which now pretty much makes it a full set of supermarket giants. Naturally, this just encourages more brain-dead numpties to stockpile even more, though, unlike the bog roll bandits of COVID. Remember them? There's only so long you can keep 100 cucumbers, isn't there? And don't even get me started on what anyone wants to do with that many in the first place. But ever since COVID, there hasn't been a single issue that can't be turned into a drama with dire warnings that even attempting to buy more than two turnips will kill your granny. Or something like that. Uh, it's, it's like the days of witty, valance, and the bloke who looked like the cartoon character Penford. Remember him? What was his name? Van Tam, that was it. And their damn slides of doom all over again. They deliberately terrorised us with doom-mongering worst-case scenarios then, and Tomatagate is heading in that direction. Aided and abetted, naturally, by the mainstream media, who never miss an opportunity to cause mass anxiety if they can help it. Shortages of British vegetables. Supermarkets are rationing vegetables like cucumbers and tomatoes. I couldn't find peppers. There was one courgette left. I mean, just this empty, empty, empty. In what sense can it be said that Brexit is to blame for those shortages? I've been trying to tell people this, this is on the way for some time, actually. Here's um, your opportunity, Liz. Because Brexit, Nick. What about Brexit? Has that got anything to do with this? Brexit is absolutely a factor here. Oh, please make it stop. That, that poor little lonely courgette, how can we leave it there on its own? Uh, the reality, of course, is there's absolutely nothing to worry about. And sorry, Sadiq, but the real issue with the uh, fruit and veg supply in the UK is mostly down to extreme weather conditions in Morocco and Spain, where we import 90% of our out-of-season veg from. Increased energy costs, the fact that European supermarkets pay more and therefore charge more than UK ones, all play a factor in this as well. It's also obviously easier to ship stuff across a landmass like Europe than the pesky channel. As MP Desmond Swain so brilliantly summed it up with this joke. If only I had been told before I voted for Brexit that it was going to cause frosts in Morocco, I could have made a different decision, couldn't I? <laughs> Oh, brilliant. And so, so you all of us. Now, all of this would be mildly amusing if it weren't for the fact that the deliberate and unnecessary anxiety instilled in the population during COVID has left us with a mental health crisis that will last decades. SAGE, the shockingly misnamed government advisory group, were a bunch of fear fetishists hooked on control. And they still are. A few recent cases of monkeypox and bird flu and lockdowns, vaccines and the dreaded filthy pieces of cloth wrapped around our faces appear, reared their ugly heads again. Well, 
I don't know about you, but I refuse to be cowed by a bunch of politicians who broke their own rules from day one and journalists who really should know better. They can take their fear-inducing hyperbole and shove it where the sun don't shine, which, as those of us with half a brain realise, is currently tomato producing Morocco.